Salutations, everybody out there on the World Wide Web tuned into this YouTube channel. Teatron Plays Games is talking at you and ready for another episode, ready to bring you another maybe Sweet Tooth inspired episode here of Pick Up Playtest. That's right. It's candy. It's M&M's. It's M&M's shell shocked for the PlayStation 1. You know, my thought process behind this one was, hey, I just so happen to own a candy related video game and uh, we, we just got done with Halloween not too long ago, right? So we probably got a decent amount of sweet stuff sitting around. Let's indulge in a little bit of sweet stuff right here on Pickup Playtest episode 16, I want to say it is now. Sweet 16. Oh my gosh, I did not plan it out that way. I literally just in real time realized it's sweet 16. Sweet tooth, sweet 16. Oh my goodness, wow. Anyway, Eminem shell shocked. Um... Definitely the only, one of the only candy-based games. In fact, the only candy-based games I think I own are, do have to do with M&Ms, so. Yes, our lovable red and yellow uh, M&M characters from the commercials and stuff made their way into the realm of video games once or twice. So we're going to take a look at their PS1 outing here. And the main reason I picked this game up when I saw it in uh, during one of my retro shops was because it looked disturbingly eerily like a Crash Bandicoot clone, and I just want to see just how much of a Crash Bandicoot clone this game is. Uh, let's do it. Let's start off, uh, right away we get an awesome, like, animated, uh, animated FMV cutscene, so feast your eyes on this. Well, my yellow fellow, it's time these M&Ms had a little R&R. &R. R R? Is that a new candy? Are we being phased out? <laughs> we are going on vacation. Come on. I love like the generic stock sound effects and everything. One oh man. Last thing before we arrive there, Chief. Who did you leave in charge of the candy factory? Hello. It's what? They what? And what? <laughs> You're turning red. Er. Repeat after me. I did not leave the M&M's minis in charge of the candy factory. Has your chocolate melted? Have you gone completely nuts? Well, the minis aren't that bad. All they need is a chance. <laughs> so yeah, basically the M&M's minis wreak havoc in this world. Get to the factory! Pronto! There's a minis mutiny going on! They've stolen the formulas for all the M&M's candies! Stop those minis! Find those formulas! Go, go, go! There goes my partner. Hmm. There goes my career. What does the what do the mini M and M's want with the M M&M and M formulas anyway? Are they trying to make it so that they're the only candy that can be sold in the M and M's family? Like no more peanut butter, no more peanut, no more pretzel flavor. Eh, well, you know, I'm gonna throw out a throw out a potentially uh, controversial opinion here and say that I wouldn't mind if the pretzel M and M's. Uh, got ditched because I'm not a real big fan of pretzels. Yes, I went there. Sorry, pretzel fans. Anyway, one of the first things we do here in this game isn't really something too Crash Bandicoot related. There were some Crash Bandicoot race type stages, right? I think maybe in 3? Crash Bandicoot 3, perhaps? Um, but, like, in all honesty, one of the first things that jumps out of my jumps out at me while I was doing test recordings for this game, just the audio, I don't know what it is. I don't know if this game just didn't have the budget for it or whatever, but I think the sound balance in this game is just a teensy bit out of whack. The music, I don't know, maybe you guys can tell, but like the music seems a little soft and the sound effects seem a little overzealous at first. So I did a little bit of tinkering in the options menu. I made the music a little louder and the sound effects a little softer. So hopefully this isn't, um, this, this doesn't sound completely awful, and it all of a sudden becomes like my worst audio edited episode of <laughs> Pickup Playtest to date. But trust me, even if it sounds a little worse than usual, I, I tried my best to do what balancing that I could, but it's so sensitive. And even in the menus, like one nudge, one nudge of the of the bar in either way when you're talking about like editing, making things louder or softer, it just makes huge drastic changes. So. I don't really know what's going on with that. But anyway, back to the game. Right away, 
<laughs> I, I saw these, like, red crates, and I'm like, I probably shouldn't uh, hit those, right? Those look like TNT crates from Crash. But no, they, along with every other crate basically in the road, is, is ripe for the picking and definitely should be hit by you pretty much at all costs because you want to, um... I guess we're collecting the M&M's minis as well as stopping them because those, those, the icon at the top left looks like a bunch of M&M's minis to me. But you want to get as many of them as you can because that gives you more uh, one-ups, which gives you more tries whenever you inevitably crash into one of the many obstacles coming at you because people don't know how to drive correctly on this road, obviously. Actually, it's either that or I'm the only one dri or I'm the only one driving in the wrong direction. Now that makes you think, doesn't it? <laughs> you know, for a second I was gonna blame. Why is everybody driving the wrong way? But you know, maybe it's actually me. Maybe it's actually me that's driving the wrong way. All right, so we reached level two, or perhaps, well, it did say zone something or another in there, but I wasn't paying close enough attention. So the first part of this story is Yellow decides, oh, I think it'd be a really smart idea to leave the very mischievous M&M's Minis in charge of the entire M&M's factory, and now I have to drive all the way over to the factory that I left them in charge of in order to set things right. Why Red doesn't tag along is beyond me. I understand it's Yellow's fault, but Red is just iconic as Yellow, so Red should also have a stake. Uh, a bigger stake, in my opinion, in, in whether or not the factory is saved. So he should probably be putting a little bit more effort into this, into this escapade, IMO. But I guess that's just me. What is this? What even is this music? Are we just, are we at a m ms hoedown now? I really don't understand what's going on. Got a, we got, like, banjo going on up in here. Uh -huh. Nope, not that kind of banjo. Although I love Banjo Kazooie. Anyway, <laughs> getting off topic. Oh, uh, what was that? What was this springy icon? What's that spring icon? Am I, is that a power up I have or something? What was that? The that I basically just that I basically just win the level because I hit that spring. I don't really even know what just happened there. Level one, zone C. Okay, so zone that was zone B. Now it's zone C. We're out of getting out of Banjo Land, and we're going to continue to drive to the factory. Oh, we're back to the first level music now. You know, in, in hindsight, I kind of liked the Banjo music. I wish it would come back, anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I plan on uploading this video shortly after Halloween is done. You know, like I said, to kind of tie into the whole, like, haha, we all, we all got a bunch of candy right now, because Halloween's over, so let's indulge in all of our candy. So yeah, what kind of candy did y'all get this season? If you got any candy, uh, feel free to let me know what your favorite candies are. Uh, do you like M&Ms in particular? Then boy oh boy, is this probably a, a uh, thematically appropriate episode for you if you're snacking on M&Ms right dang now. Make sure, like literally, if I caught you like snacking on M&Ms as you clicked on this video, definitely let me know. I want to know just how many people I caught in the middle of a nice M&M snack. <laughs> Um, I really do like M&M's, it's just I haven't, oh my goodness, that's twice in a row now I caught that biker dude, I really need to, I think I need to veer hard to the right there, at that point. <clears throat> that is a very fun 3D PS1 rendered cow right up there. I'm just gonna hug the right, I'm gonna like screw the ramp right now, I don't even care. There, good. I got a little further, watch out cow. Oh, please. I... <laughs> okay, I just recently... I just got the checkpoint, and then I uh, crashed, so, like, it set, it set me back a whole, like, five five feet. That was, that was pretty random. Anyway. I used to like M&Ms a lot, and I still do, but not nearly as much. Um, and I guess if I, my preferred M&M's flavor, I guess would be peanut. I do like a little bit, a little bit of the extra crunch that the peanut M&M's provide. <clears throat> Although if I'm talking like favorite, favorite candies, like the candies that I've been snacking on the last few weeks here with end of October, beginning of November here, uh, would be Reese's Peanut Butter Cups and 
not just a Kit, like Kit Kats, but not just any kind of Kit Kat. I love the white chocolate coated Kit Kats. They uh, have the orange, orange colored white cream around this time of year because of Halloween and stuff. So, oh, it's so good. Wait, little friend. Maybe it's time to ask who's the best candy for the job. Maybe this calls for the ringer. The top gun. The gold Red gun. is here after all. Nah, you're right. You go. Wish me luck. Miracles happen every single day. They do. We're dead. Red is here, but he still sends us in to do the dirty work. It's called level two is called milk chocolate. All right, level two zone A, milk chocolate. Here we go. Oh no, the minis have messed with the milk chocolate. We're in big trouble. The minis have messed with the milk chocolate. You are in big trouble. Now he doesn't even want to, like, accept responsibility, which, yes, understood. I know that's Yellow's fault, but come on, Red. You could be a better partner than that. This, okay, here we go. Here we go. This has got to be the part now where it becomes a Crash Bandicoot clone. You can just tell just from that just from that loading screen. Look at how he's, the camera's oriented and stuff. Like, yes, let's, let's, all, let's all laugh and tee-hee at just how much this is a Crash Bandicoot clone clone slash ripoff. Look, there's even a... Okay, so you press square, and it's literally a spin attack. They're not even trying to hide it, dude. Okay, so circle is also a spin attack. Triangle brings up the HUD. What is this? What is this enemy? What even is it? And you break crates. The ha oh, I didn't realize the blue ones literally had the M&M's logo on it. Oh, so do the red ones. And so do the other ones, too. Oh, my. And you can just bounce on them, just like in Crash. Okay, yeah. I... This is just... This is just adorable. I wonder how difficult this game becomes, and maybe or whether or not it could be considered baby's first Crash Bandicoot. Maybe you could, like, ha give this to your kids if they wanted to, cr to play Crash, but Crash was too hard for them. This this is a TNT, isn't it? Yeah. Three, two, one, boom. That's hilarious. How does this stuff even work? I'm genuinely curious how how copyright stuff works and stuff. What when does something cross over from homage to straight up ripoff where like the original copyright holders and stuff could say like you're infringing on our copyright. This is this is our this is literally our game. What did I just die by touching the chocolate? But I am chocolate. What a ripoff! Anyway, <laughs> yeah, there's like chocolate pouring out of the pipes here, and if I touch it, I die. Okay, that's like that's like that's like a human dying if they touch their own blood because they accidentally got a paper cut. Like, come on now, chocolate is my lifeblood. It shouldn't kill me. That's that's ridiculous. I cry foul. Oh yes, this this also is deadly chocolate of some kind. Is that like a... what is this... what is that, um, hard hat symbol in the lower, in the lower part of the screen? Like, does that do anything? Am I supposed to be pressing a certain button? Oh, look! Look, it's a danger crate! But instead of, yeah, instead of nitro, it's just danger. That's... Back to what I was saying, like, when does parody or homage or inspired by when does that ever when does that what at what point does that cross over into straight up yo you ripped off our game and we're not happy about it <laughs> you know what i'm saying i don't know how to activate the whatever that is in the bottom left or bottom right there on the screen i'll keep pressing but what's that person x triangle circle Got the up buttons nope come on now it can't just be just for show, right? Hmm. Oh, and now it's gone. Do I risk trying to get this blue crate? Let's try it. And... Oh, watch for your shadow, dude. There we go, yes. We got the tricks. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> I accidentally got blown up by that one. Got a little too close. 
Well, I think I can tell you one thing right off the bat. I don't think in a Crash Bandicoot game, any Crash Bandicoot game that I can think of, I would have 30 lives this soon into the, like, towards the beginning of the game, so... At least, at least I have a bit of a buffer going into this game, right? <laughs> yeah, 32 lives, like, okay. That doesn't seem at all realistic for somebody who's... For, uh... Crash Bandicoot game, but for M&M's Crash Bandicoot, M&M's Bandicoot, whatever you want to call it, I guess it's a bit more realistic. Oh, there we go. So I guess we got a bit of a jazzy swing number for our background music. It's not terrible. It doesn't really scream M&M's, but then again... Nice. I didn't touch the actual chocolate game. I touched the edge that was near the chocolate, and you killed me anyway. So that is uh, how you say not fair. <laughs> anyway, oh, while we're still kind of like bouncing back from Halloween and stuff, uh, hope hope y'all had a good one. Any uh, costume party goers out there? Anybody like do something crazy? Like, did you did you uh, enter a costume contest and win first place? Like, if you did something really cool, like let me know. Can't believe it's already like past Halloween now. We're getting close to Thanksgiving and Christmas. Like, wow, this year is just flying. But you know what they say: time flies when you're having fun, and I cannot tell y'all how much fun it is that I <sighs> am now performing these videos for an audience of well over 200 subscribers. I, I can't can't really wrap my head around just how grateful I truly am to have the audience that I do. And I am not doing very good at this room. Hold on. Ugh. Nice! <laughs> when I finally reach the platform, I get hit by one of the robot things. It's not, it's not one thing, it's another, I swear. Okay, jump. Good. Alright, this is... Oh, it's a door. I thought it was an elevator for a second. It's like, where do I go? Oh, am I, am I collecting a secret MacGuffin as I break open some of those crates? Something just flashed at the top of the screen. I wonder what that's all about. Okay. Yo, the bouncing tricks. The game makes it pretty easy to, to do that, though, because it gives you your shadow, which is very considerate. Some games could learn a thing or two about letting us know exactly where we're going to land. What is this all about? Oh, nice! If you don't react fast enough, the crate just gets thrown away by them. Nice. I was just standing there stupefied, wondering how I'm supposed to do it, and then I, I, I wasted too much time, clearly. Oi. You know, playing this game makes me wonder, does anybody else know, like, just how many- how many Crash Bandicoot clones do you think there are on the PlayStation? The, I, I know it was- it had to have been, like, it obviously was, considering how many people tried to- tried to, uh, recreate it, but it had to be, like, the hot ticket item back in the day. Like, wow, did y'all see how ridiculously popular Crash Bandicoot got? We absolutely have to do that as well in our game. Kind of like back in the NES days, I'm assuming, like, after Mario became a mainstay in, like, houses all across the world. It was like, wow, we really need to do action 2D platformer stuff exactly like Mario does. So I wonder how many um, Crash clones are actually on this console. <laughs> that would be kind of fun to, to, to figure out. Actually, I'm a pretty big connoisseur of YouTube videos, as you've probably guessed. Go back and try to get those floating ones now that I finally got a checkpoint again. I wonder if someone actually did a YouTube video on it. I can see it right now, like Crash Bandicoot clones on PS1. Dash Scott the Waz. No. <laughs> I do like Scott, but I don't think he did a Crash Bandicoot clone commercial. Secret formula. Ah, I think I must have gotten every part of that thing. The secret bonus, secret formula, collectible. Maybe it means I get to play a bonus at the end of the level? I don't know.
Boy, I like how that, um, that driving, that driving world, the, those three zones or levels, they, they, they call them zones, but those three levels that I was, I was driving took only about 10 minutes, and now this is like the first zone, I want to say, of the inside of the factory, and this is taking considerably longer. Am I supposed to go down there? I am. Watch as I just, as, as soon as I just said that, it's gonna like bring me to the next level, in theory. Oh, please don't tell me I have to drive this vehicle that it's actually showing me right now. What? I'm not ready for another. Uh, there was cars and there was the actual Crash Bandicoot platforming. Now what? There's a whole bunch of lurches and lurches in gameplay right now. I can't, I can't keep up. Yeah, yep. Yeah, here we go. Now we're just flying around. Is this, just, is this just a thing with licensed games? Like, like when you're when you're doing a licensed game with candy, like really, what can you do besides just throw a whole bunch of different gameplay ideas at the wall just to see what sticks? Oh boy, I crashed. That <laughs> crashed. Get it? Crash. The Bandicoot. Anyway. <laughs> oh, again. So we had, so like how many games do you think this this whole this whole um, game is ripping off so far? We got Crash Bandicoot, we had racing earlier, so like, I don't know, like a kart racer, and now we have like Star Fox. This is like a cheap knockoff licensed candy M&M's version of Star Fox or something we got going on here now. Whoa, those, some of those boxes are so far off to the, to the left and right, they like... Is that a chicken? What am I looking at? Do you see that in front of me? Do you see? What was that? I wish I had, like... Yeah, look at that. There's a freaking chicken or something. What, what was going on? I wish I had weapons or something to shoot at it, but, like, no. No. This ain't chicken shoot on Wii. Or whatever that random shovelware chicken shooting carnival game type thing was. Oof, maybe I should find that game and pick up playtest it one day. I could probably just, like... Just go to GameStop one day and just buy, like, half of their Wii shelf for, like... 20 bucks. Like, there's a lot of cheap shovelware out there that, that might make for funny uh, pickup playtests one time. You, you never know. Genius, dude. Just genius. I, I went to the left so far that I just crashed into the wall. <sighs> what a weird what am I? What is even? What is even happening thematically in the context of this? Well, I hesitate to call it grand story, but like the M and M factory just has a spaceship flying section because reasons. I don't really know. But then again, with something as broad as like you know chocolate or anything like that, why, why not let your imagination run wild when you're making a game based off of M and M's? There really isn't a whole lot of established lore, right? You know, so you really kind of... It was like, you know... You could just basically go for it and... Wait a minute. Was that the bonus area? That was probably the bonus area that I got because I... Oh, you know what? Wow. Here I was treating it like an actual level, but that wasn't even the next level. It was just because I got all the pieces of the secret formula or whatever, like I said. Maybe you get to do a bonus level. And yes, you do. That's, that literally was the bonus level. <laughs> anyway. This game does still seem to kind of bite off a lot more than it potentially could chew. Um, but at least it wasn't like the actual, at least that wasn't the actual, like, canon next level. Well, I thought I had to use that robot as a boost, but I guess not. You gotta love that Yellow even has, like, a spin attack, just like Crash. They didn't do, like, a punch or something to kind of make it, like, slightly less of a ripoff. No, it's just straight up Crash's spin attack. <laughs> you know how people were, like, begging for Crash Bandicoot to be the final uh, Smash Bros. character? Not that I would have minded, because he's fun, but I'm pretty glad that Sora got in, not gonna lie. But, like, everybody was begging for Crash to be the final 
character. Nah, man, it should have been Yellow M&M, because he would have basically had the same moveset. <laughs> Everybody would have, been, would have been completely confused, like, but... No, let's let, let's let Yellow M&M be the final Smash Bros. character. Why not? <laughs> I'm surprised I even made that jump. That looked really dumb. Oh boy, oh boy. I'm really interested to see if anybody actually has any experience with these types of games as well. Like, normally I ask, like, have you played these type, these games before? And like, some some episodes I go into it thinking like, yeah, there's definitely gonna be someone who's played this before. And then other, other episodes like this where I don't think anybody, like, like I'll be surprised if any of y'all have played this game before. Because if it wasn't for pickup playtest here, I wouldn't be playing it either, honestly. <laughs> And it, I, honestly, I wouldn't even own it if it wasn't for the fact that I like to collect games. Um, like I said, I saw it in the store, and I'm just like, dude, I need this because it looks like a really hilarious, a hilariously awkward Crash Bandicoot clone, and I need that in my life. Because I collect, I collect video games, good and bad video games. They don't have to be stellar pieces of work or even that original in order to be something I want in my collection. <laughs> Oops, he says, as he gets completely sniped by a robot in midair. There we go. Screw the TNT. Screw those floating boxes, whatevs. Sometimes I really don't feel like I'm going to hit those jumps, but then I do, and everything is all okay. No, I genuinely will be surprised if anybody has played this game. Not to, like, rip on it or anything, because it's a decently fun time. I, 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 It's clicking with me, because I play Crash Bandicoot, so the, the general flow of this of this game is, is, is just is on par with what I expect from a, from a Crash Bandicoot game. It's just... I don't really expect this to be, you know, at the top of anybody's, like, top ten, this is the best video game I've ever played lists. Um, but if this game, like, defined your childhood, let me know. Honestly. I can see this as a more approachable, um, Crash Bandicoot, like I said, for kids, potentially. Except for those, um, boxes that they keep insisting on putting out to the side. Those are not kid-friendly maneuvers. I would argue, anyway. Ooh, moving platforms. That's a little tricky. Especially for only the second level here in the main factory area, but let's see what we can do here. I, I must admit, despite this being weird, despite this probably being an, an episode of pickup playtest that y'all were not expecting to see, I'm actually having a decent amount of fun with this game. As evidenced by the fact that I'm fast approaching the half hour mark and haven't wrapped up the video yet. <laughs> so for what it's worth, it might not have been um, the craziest PS1 game or something that- oh, pfft, nice. I can completely can't even see it when it's off screen like that. Anyway, y'all were probably not expecting this, but I wanted to give it to y'all as a nice little goofy candy-related joke, like, hey, post-Halloween sugar, sugar rushes and stuff, so here I am playing M&Ms. <laughs> if, um, if you liked this, then I appreciate it. If it, was, if it was an awkward Crash Bandicoot clone that you thought was at least worth a little bit of your time, well, then you're, you're in good company because I thought the same thing. <laughs> it's an awkward Crash Bandicoot clone, but I consider it worth my time. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Pick up playtest. Episode 16 is officially in the books, and I am super happy that y'all are continuing to support the content, and just, I continue to grow my Twitter fam and my YouTube fam. Thanks so much for all the likes, the subs, the feedback, the follows, you name it. Pick up playtest will continue, bringing y'all all of these crazy, wacky, off-the-wall entries from my, <laughs> from my retro game collection, including stuff like this where you might not have expected it. <laughs> All right. Until the next upload here on the Ttrom Plays Games YouTube channel, I have been your host, Ttrom. Thanks for watching. Stay safe, take care, and have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day.
Oh, and be sure to brush your teeth after all that candy. <laughs> Peace out.